Hello, I'm Ken Suzuki. It has been nearly two years since I made the first video of this tumble dryer that stops every five minutes. Surprisingly, I got the high numbers of viewers and a good response from them. Thank you very much. However, as I mentioned in the last video, it wasn't quite fixing everything about the stop. It still stopped. And this winter started, my machine, still the same, starting to stop especially at the beginning of the cycle when lots of stuff inside the dryer and there uh, are lots of humidity inside i thought that was the cause of humidity but i wasn't quite sure why it's stopping so i did further investigation about this dryer so in this video i show you two another sensors one is humidity sensor which is located at the back of this one and another sensor is a heat sensor that is located at the back of the dryer. After my activity in this video, my dryer seems to be okay, not stopping anymore. I'd like to share my experience of uh, what I have done and also share my thought why it fixed. It seems to be fixed. Hope it's fixed. So let's go through what I've done. The first is humidity sensor. Two screws need to be come out. Needs a little bit of pulling for removing the sensor housing. Gave a good wipe for sensor's two metal probe. And the sensor's housing. There's no conductivity between two probes on this humidity sensor. What the humidity sensor does is to get conductivity level between two probes depending on the humidity level inside a drum. So the dryer can run without this sensor. However, running a dryer without humidity sensor, the dryer may not stop as no signal coming from humidity sensor. The inside the drum is now dry because there's no conductivity of humidity. So the humidity sensor wasn't the reason my dryer was stopping at the beginning of the cycle because there are lots of wet clothes inside and lots of humidity inside why the humidity sensor can't stop it the role of the humidity sensor is at the end of the cycle when clothes are getting dry no conductivity between two probes that signals back to the machine and stops so the next I had a look at the heat sensor at the back of the machine so removing the back panel the few screws come out but it's not that difficult Wedged by minus driver. Cleaning inside, I first tried vacuum cleaner, but it didn't work much, so I have to actually wipe by kitchen roll. It was very sticky stuff on the panel surface. Make sure to clean fan fins. And next to remove another duct, two screws. And this was also a full of sticky stuff as well. After the deep clean, this must be the heating wire inside. I wonder how the heating wire reacts with this dry run. It didn't seem to be that units get really hot. I can see red wire, but none of the others. After a while, I decided to remove the heating unit. Two screws to come out. After a bit of a cleaning, so this one, thermostat, to looking at the temperature, air around here. And uh, another sensor, this one, two lines. This one, limiter sensor. As usual, I decided to run with heating unit detached condition. Dangerous. I wasn't quite sure that when the heating unit is detached, then the wire gets heated, whereas when it is attached on a dryer, no wire is heated up. I thought that the air blow from the fan at the bottom might have decreased the temperature around the thermostat. However, that wasn't the case as oh, later again. on, I tried again with a board blocking an air blow, but still the wire gets up. heated up.
only the thing I can think of is that maybe something to do with the earth wire that has to be attached on the back panel. However, not sure. However, this doesn't answer any of my question. Why dryer was stopping at the beginning of this cycle? So I decided to understand more about this dryer, how the wet clothes inside are getting dried. There are two air flows used in this system. One is cold airflow and another one is hot airflow. The first, cold airflow, outside air is pulled by motor behind this mesh panel. And the air is sent to inside duct and going through heat exchanger in sideway. This is the side view, the cold air coming from that duct and they come out from the side of the heat exchanger and come out from the back of the dryer. So that's the cold airflow. Next is hot airflow. The air pulling fan is located at the back of the dryer and the motor behind it. Surprisingly, there's no hole behind this fan. So where the air intake come from, to close look, there are small holes, six of them, the air intake, the air is pulled from inside the drum. Also considered, some of the end of the cold airflow must have been pulled from the gap between the drum and the back panel of the dryer. So the pulled air is sent into duct, going through heat wire and into the drum. Hot steamed air in a dryer is pushed into the filter at the front of the dryer, coming down and sent to the heat exchanger. The air is sent from front to the back of the heat exchanger and reached to the chamber at the back of the dryer. As noted, there's no escaping route after reaching to the chamber. Only the way for the steam to escape the route is to change its shape to water, going to the sump. The role of heat exchanger is meeting cold air and hot air, changing hot air into water. Water is dropped into the thump. This, the heat exchanger, is the key element for the dryer keep going. If the heat exchanger isn't doing exchanging the hot air moisture into the water quick enough, then what happens? The dryer wants to dry the wet clothes as quick as possible, but it can't. System trying to heat up the wet clothes, so more heating up on the wire. Then wet clothes produces more water vapor inside the drum. This increases pressures inside the dryer. The pressure increase actually allows the temperature increase inside the dryer. Then what happens is, this is the system that limiter works as the temperature too much increase, then stops the dryer system. My case was that the motor and the fan for the hot airflow system couldn't send the air into the drum and into the hot heat exchanger quick enough. Because as you see, as, we, as I see, the clogging, the, a lot of debris in, inside hot air system at the, duct, the back of the duct. What I want to say is, the debris at the back of the panel was actually blocking the airflow, then the fan was unable to send the air into the drum. I used a blue tag to check the gap between the panel and the duct wall. It was about 2 milli. I suspect there's enough debris to stop the airflow into the drum. This stopped the hot airflow, sending moisture air into the heat exchanger. Instead, as said, water vapor or the steam accumulated in the drum increased the pressure inside the drum. That allowed temperature increase of the steam and the limiter sensor triggered to stop the dryer. So that my theory is, the condition of the heat exchanger and also the passage for the hot airflow and the cold airflow as clear as possible is very critical for the dryer to be running without stopping. The reason I opening up the side panel is that if I could access to the cold airflow path, the fans at the back of the front duct, and if I can clean it for improving the condition of the cold airflow. However, they seem not to be able to remove the cover for the fan without removing a drum unit so I couldn't access and clean. I also tried to clean the heat exchanger by using one millimeter stick, but it wasn't very successful. After all this activity, have I fixed the issue that dryer stops at the beginning? No, it still stops. It's not every five minutes stopping. However, it still stops at the beginning to the middle of this uh, cycle once or twice. So I did this. 
New heat exchanger, whether it helps or not. However, it came as damaged, the hinge for the tub was broken, and the heat exchanger was squashed. So unfortunately, I don't want to try the damaged products onto this one. So at this point, I can't replace the old heat exchanger to the new heat exchanger. However, thanks for watching till end. See you another time. Bye bye.